Welcome to Chapter 7, Excel for Investments. Now, in this chapter, we're giving an industry of apparel stores. So we have the um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different stores and the industry average. So the industry average is just the average of all these um, financial statement key items. And let me make this uh, bigger. So the idea is what we're going to do is we're going to take this data using the formulas from here. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So here are the formulas, the equations from the chapter. So I put them in the spreadsheet so you know where the equations are. We're not using every equation here, but we're using the majority of them here. So your formulas are here and then your data for the inputs are here. Let me resize the whole spreadsheet. Okay. So now we have our input here and we have to calculate our liquidity ratios, asset ratios, debt management, and profitability and market value ratios. So for each cell, you're going to find the formula. You know, so here, current ratio is going to be current assets divided by current liabilities. So I would just take current assets divided by current liabilities, and I get that multiple. Then if we're going to do the asset test ratio, this is going to be current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put parentheses around, and we get this variable here, the networking capital. And again, you can see how these formulas, current ratio, quick ratio, networking capital is, so the networking capital formula again is here, move this over, current assets minus current liability. So this really isn't so much of a ratio as a number, but as we go through, Current assets, oops. Current assets minus current liabilities. Okay, so I, have, I did my first three numbers. So you'd go through the rest of these equations down here and calculate these equations based on these formulas here. Now, once you do the first set, and be careful that you always format them correctly. You know, for example, when you do uh, a net profit margin, which is the equation 710, it's net, net profit after taxes divided by sales revenue. So to do that, we'll go back up here, net profit after tax divided by sales revenue. Now this is a percentage, so it's already formatted in percent, which is good. Uh, so you just have to make sure you know what the correct format is. Some are percentages but, uh, and some are multiples. And you can look at the textbook for when they should, what you should be using. So once you have your ratio, you can just copy these across until you get to the average column. So this column, and I should probably freeze the pane here. I just froze the pane so we could see the titles up here. And what we want to do is industry average. So to calculate an average, we just say plus or equals, both work. Find our average formula, highlight our variables, and we have our average. And we can kind of move this down. And you see how this is not in the right format. So I could just use Go to the home page and just copy that format over. Okay. So you'll need to do that with all the variables moving down. And then once you have this whole grid filled in based on these formulas, then you're going to answer a couple basic questions. So based on the financial ratios above, which stock is the best or best which is the best overall set of financial ratios? This should be has. 
the best overall set of financial ratios. Based on the financial ratios above, which stock is the has the worst overall set of financial ratios? And then based on the financial ratios, which stock would make the best investment? Support your answer. So a couple of word-based problems where think of this as sort of a small case where you put all your data together here and then you want to analyze these 10 companies and figure out which is the best company, which is the worst company, and then support it with uh, data. Basically, if you pick the company that, has, that you think has the best set of overall financial ratios, then you should probably list the um, five or six or so financial ratios that are the best of the bunch. So you would really want to look for the stock that has the most financial ratios that beat the average um, or beat the group of stocks. So this takes a little investigating work, a little casework to complete this. So overall, not a very challenging uh, case quantitatively, but you still have to um, get a little more practice with Excel, which is the point of these spreadsheets is to give you some practice with Excel. But what is the more difficult part of this case is the analytical side when you have to answer these questions in this text box below. Okay, thank you for your time, and I hope you found this helpful for completing Chapter 7 Excel for Investments. Thank you.